Hey, there we go! That's how you get wrongfully banned for cheating. One game ban on record, zero days since last ban. So we got VAC banned. It took an hour. Before I found out about this whole situation with Counter-Strike, a small startup by the name of AnyBrain reached out to me. They claim to be able to catch cheaters with 99% accuracy on any game and on any platform. I'm listening. When they deemed me, they made sure that I would potentially make a video if I did an interview with them, which is sort of a red flag, but I wanted to hear them out. So we set up an interview. In preparation, I asked a few tough questions like, is there any proof that your product works? They told me they would send me testimonials from games they've worked with. Okay. But they were going to redact the source of the testimonial. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they told me they'd have to reschedule the interview. <laughs> okay. And before everyone gets their pitchforks out, interviewing anti-cheat people is inherently difficult. They they won't tell you what they are doing for obvious reasons, but in AnyBrain's case, they can't show me that they even have a working product. And I don't want to promote a company I can't trust or validate. Sending questions ahead of time is pretty standard. It's what I did when I set up an interview with Phil, the head of AnyCheat at Riot's Vanguard and previous head of AnyCheat at Amazon. And getting back to AnyBrain, I did eventually get them to respond to a few of my questions, which we'll get to in a minute. And I must give them some credit. At least they attempted to talk about what they were up to, which is not the MO of other big players in this space, such as Valve. While I was researching this topic, Counter-Strike 2 was in the middle of their largest ban wave in CS history, and it's not the good kind. In October, multiple large false ban waves hit the community. First, it was an anti-lag setting for AMD drivers, and then there was a few other false detects, such as a well-documented issue with Windows 7. Over time, everything was mostly figured out, but a lot of people were still still left banned, and people were frustrated with Valve's silence. It was discovered that their AI anti-cheat was confusing high DPI movement um, for spin botting. People were able to reproduce the false detection, going as far to do speed runs, <laughs> proving that anti-cheat was detecting and banning users falsely live in real time. And I know what many of you guys are thinking, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. But I think this just points out that number one, AI cheat detection is not perfect. And number two, the bans are being carried out by AI in real time, which was not the case in the past. And thirdly, these accounts are still banned, which makes me believe a human never reviewed them. So what's going on here? Well, in March of this year, Valve dismantled their community-run anti-cheat solution called Overwatch. Their reasoning? Well, we don't know. They, they haven't actually publicly stated anything, but we know they couldn't stop cheaters from using bot accounts to game the Overwatch system. Cheaters would use their bot accounts to keep themselves from being banned, and in some rare cases, banning legit players in the process. This is the YouTuber Sparkles, and he made a video about three years ago about, well, I'll let him tell you. The secret shady underworld of cheaters manipulating the Overwatch system to their advantage, mm. remaining unbanned, getting other cheaters banned, and possibly even getting innocent people banned, yeah? I've already seen like a couple innocent people get grief banned. He interviewed a cheater who showed how they gamed the Overwatch system. I don't wake up in the morning wondering if I've been banned even after a really cheaty couple games. Because <laughs> at this point, I, I just can't see how I'm going to get banned. It's yeah, I actually took um, a video demo for you of just checking the box in my cheat, like going into an Overwatch case and then checking the box. And then you can just see all the players immediately show up. You see, in Overwatch, everyone is supposed to be anonymous. The player you are judging is just supposed to be a suspect. His name should not be visible. And then I can open their profiles. People have developed services in which bots go through Overwatch cases looking for specific people. Way easier to prevent someone from being convicted than it is to force someone to be convicted. Okay, to wrongfully convict them, yeah. Yeah. Valve couldn't detect and identify cheater bot accounts, so they overhauled the Overwatch system, replacing humans with AI in March of this year. Think about that. Valve's AI wasn't smart enough to catch bots controlling the Overwatch system. So they took humans completely out of the loop and gave the power to AI. All cheat reports are now sent to Overwatch AI for review. Okay. About three years ago, Valve gave us some insider information as to how their AI anti-cheat solution, VACnet, operated at the time. VACnet would use AI to detect a cheater and send the case over to Overwatch to be reviewed 
by humans. Valve's John McDonald explains how Overwatch system works at GDC. Uh, they go through this process. They Players report other players, and then a sort of central coordinator selects cases. Uh, by the way, that is, a, that is a computer, it is not a person. There isn't like a guy at Valve that is like, I am the coordinator. That would be kind of cool, but it's not a thing. Um, and then the players uh, adjudicate those cases. They, other players basically decide, is this person guilty? And he goes on to explain how VACnet and Overwatch work together. Uh, and the idea was that basically we would uh, use this Overwatch as a giant pool of labeled data, uh, and we would train VACnet from Overwatch. And then we would build uh, a cluster of machines that would monitor matches with the model that we built. Uh, we would use VACnet then to submit cases and then humans would ultimately decide whether or not the person was a cheater. So back to our sort of Overwatch uh, pipeline, all we have to do is slot in VACnet kind of right here. Okay, so how did we do? And the system was doing well. It was identifying more cheaters with the power of AI and humans working in tandem. But that was years ago. Currently, the system has seemingly transitioned over to VAC Live. Cases are identified and ruled on sometimes in less than five or 10 minutes. And I couldn't find any evidence of Valve hiring thousands of employees to take over Overwatch. So I think it's safe to assume we have a situation where both the detection and the ruling are being done by a computer. And we know this because some of these banned speed runs are occurring so quickly, it's nearly impossible for them to be manually reviewed. So we had all these massive ban waves starting in October, but earlier this week, another massive ban wave went out, affecting numerous pro players, shoutcasters, and gamers of all skill levels. People are still speculating as to what triggered the ban. CS2 finally made an official statement this time, stating, yesterday's update mistakenly triggered game bans. We fixed the issue and ban rollbacks are in progress. And while a good portion of the bans have been rolled back, there's been no explanation as to why this happened in the first place. Valve rarely gives us any information. Most of what we know is from people testing and polling players, which, you know, was the case with the high DPI mouse situation. And there are still gamers who were falsely banned and are still banned today from months ago after using high DPI mouse settings. My theory is that Valve doesn't have the manpower to go through all of these unique situations and actually figure out what's happening on a case by case basis. Some of these bans are not simple false detections like um, the stuff that they encountered in the months prior. So if they roll back all of the bans on spin botting behavior, they let thousands of cheaters back into the game. It's clear that a high DPI mouse can trick the AI, but what are they going to do about it? And the DPI mouse setting is just one false detection we've been able to reverse engineer and emulate. What else is wrong about the AI? It would take them weeks to comb through all of the accounts affected, and they replaced the volunteer human army of experienced Counter-Strike players willing to help out back in March. And even more ironic, Valve probably banned a lot of their ex-volunteers by accident with their latest shenanigans. But let's back out a bit and understand why there is no amount of money or resources Valve can throw at this to solve the underlying problem. It's important to realize that nobody, not even Google, has developed an AI that can think independently in any meaningful way. Even ChatGPT can't solve math problems with any accuracy that it hasn't seen yet, as many high school students realized when they were doing their calculus homework. Even worse, AI has a tendency to hallucinate. A hallucination is when an AI model generates incorrect information, but presents it as if it were fact, like how the AI has been banning aimbotters who are able to trick the AI with high DPI mouse settings. In other words, AI has a tendency to make shit up. And while AI anti-cheat isn't the same as like a large language model like ChatGPT or an image generator like OpenAI's uh, DALL-E, AI language models don't think for themselves. They are fed an enormous amount of data, and in ChatGPT's case, it's like 300 billion words. And I know I'm simplifying things here, but to keep this portion of the video brief, essentially, the AI uses all of these words to predict a response. Similarly, an AI in a cheat would be fed all of the movement and input data from a massive library of previous Counter-Strike games. This is called machine learning. And even after feeding the machine millions of hours of game data, Humans at some point in the process have to label some of the footage as cheater gameplay or legit gameplay. And here lies the problem. We can never feed it perfect data because no one knows how many cheaters there are. No one. 
Not the game developer, not the cheap developer, and certainly not the AI machine learning models. It's kind of scary. I can show a machine learning model pictures of ducks and with near absolute certainty, tell it what is a duck and what is not a duck. And even if I make a few mistakes here and there, the model will become very accurate. But with cheater gameplay, we can't do that. Some of the legit gameplay we send it will in fact be a closet cheater because there's no way of knowing sometimes. And even worse, we might label gameplay as a cheater when in fact it was a legit player. So here's what the AI anti-cheat supporters will say. A traditional anti-cheat can get a detection and establish that a player is a known cheater. And rather than banning the player, we can let them play for a bit and record their data and feed that to the model. Okay, great. But you detected them. You didn't need the AI, and you are only training the model to catch cheats that are detectable. It's cheaters we can't detect that we need the help from AI. It's the ESP togglers that aren't rage hacking. It's the boutique private cheats that have gone undetected for years that we want to stop. Another solution is why not pay people to play and closet cheat and feed that info to the model? Well, there's this whole thing called the observer bias in psychology, and there are numerous other problems, but let's just say we solve all of that. Essentially, you have to have access to the latest cheat technology and emulate it perfectly for the model to learn, which is impossible. But let's say we achieve that level of input data. Even if you could do that, and the AI overlords uh, you know, are able to scrub the entire internet for new cheats and emulate thousands of players using them to train the model at all times, you'd be playing a constant game of catch up, which is what we are doing now with traditional anti-cheat, ever in pursuit of a moving target. And let's say the AI gets so smart it has a mind of its own and it's one step ahead of every cheater in every way. Well, we aren't there yet, but even if we were, what's to stop the cheater from utilizing the same technology for themselves? And even worse, the most damning problem with these AI models is how do you know the cheater's gameplay or input is what the server says it is? AI anti-cheat only has a record of the server's data. In other words, it only has a record of what the cheater sends to the server. The AI anti-cheat doesn't know what's actually going on with the client's hardware. A secure client is required before analyzing movement data. And if the cheater is bypassing traditional anti-cheat measures, you can't rely on the input data for the AI anti-cheat. Cheats such as ESP, the most common cheat used in games like Escape from Tarkov, manipulate the client itself. It would not be visible to the AI anti-cheat. I asked AnyBrain about some of these challenges. I'll put the entire email here they sent. Um, so you can, you know, pause at any time and read everything. But here's what they had to say. I asked for info or a demonstration on how they got to their 99% accuracy statement. They provided no data, no demonstration, but stated they have a low false positive rate. But do they have a low false positive on detecting obvious aim bots that any human could spot from a mile away? I, I don't know. They didn't provide any actual data or proof that any of this is true. I asked how they would detect client side cheats like ESB. They can't right now, but have high hopes and want to circle back around and uh, revisit this at a later date. I asked how they could fingerprint someone's inputs without securing the client's hardware. By the way, anybody claims to be able to fingerprint a player's input and detect and ban them, even if they create a new account in the future. They said it would be used on top of a traditional anti-cheat, quote, contrary to traditional anti-cheats, we do not need to know what's on the hardware. So they don't have a response to the main way that cheaters will bypass any brain. So any brain is essentially key logging a player's mouse and keyboard input. And their solution as to how they will handle clients who will obscure this data is what? Maybe they misunderstood my question and got caught up with the word hardware, but this is literally the biggest challenge they must overcome. How do you know the client is inputting the keys and mouse movements you say they are? If the hardware isn't secure, you cannot analyze the client's input. I asked them, has any brain's technology been validated by independent industry experts? If so, could you share these endorsements? They backpedaled and said they are just getting started despite saying they have been working on this tech long before 2015 in another interview. They gave me this study they did uh, for me to review. 
In the abstract, their research is solely based on aim bots and no other cheater behavior. So no ESP detection or any other types of cheats. And of course, they have nothing to prove that they can fingerprint players and all of the other extraordinary claims. They also acknowledge in the study that there isn't an official report of the exact amount of active cheaters playing in the game. But they argue that their data set is representative of the real world proportion of legitimate to fraudulent players based on what? And I get frustrated with statements like this because that's the whole reason I did the wiggle video is I think people's general understanding of what's going on is often very incorrect. And how did they get cheater input to study and train these models? The researchers collected cheater input data for their study by having players install an application that recorded keyboard and mouse events with some sort of, you know, in-house aimbot, I assume, uh, that they don't go into much detail about. So these guys at AnyBrain have proved that they can detect their own aimbot from players they hired or volunteered to play with the said aimbot. So what? I also found it odd that in the study's disclosures, they wouldn't list the fact that these guys are running a for-profit tech startup trying to sell anti-cheat solutions to video game companies as a conflict of interest. I don't want to pick on these guys too much. I just wish these tech startups would be more transparent with where they actually are rather than where they want to be. We have a long way to go before AI is going to be banning all types of players of cheaters with any real accuracy. And to any brain, shame on you. You can't take a call with me and explain how your shit works. You can't show me a shred of evidence your product works. Sometimes I feel like my reputation is more at stake than these tech startups. Now, what do I think about AI's role in the energy cheat space is right now? AI is an additional tool to help us create a more fair playing field. I will continue to extend an invitation to any brain, Valve, or any developer to show me a working product. So far, I'm unimpressed. And as far as Valve is concerned, I, I don't even know what to say. It's a dark time for competitive FPS shooters. And with Tarkov's arena around the corner, it's not looking great for Battle State games as well. They announced a 16,500 player band wave in one month recently, up from 2,400 from the previous month. And they recently had a cheater streaming in their online tournament. He made it all the way to the seventh day before they banned him live. And, you know, this stuff stuttering and jittering that was present in the land tournament of the arena game mode. It doesn't even hold that angle. Whoa, that Wow. Magic? Magical armor? All right, second round, second opportunity? Uh, no! Uh. Which makes me think they didn't fundamentally rewrite the netcode. I suspect cheating will be just as rampant in the arena game mode over time. Special thanks to the anti-cheat PD for answering all my dumb questions and consulting me about the Counter-Strike situation. I encourage you to follow them over on Twitter or X. And while you're at it, give my uh, X a uh, some love too. Uh, links are all in the description. This video is kind of a bummer. Sorry, sometimes it's just like that. We'll see you guys in the next video.